Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you never miss an upload. Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to another podcast. And of today, we're also going to be talking about something spooky, something haunted. Today, we're talking about the Winchester house. Ooh. Yeah, I was waiting for your ooh, <laughs> spooky stuff. Ooh, ooh spooky scary stuff. stuff. <laughs> Exactly. <sighs> Exacto facto. The Winchester House is a mansion that currently stands in San Jose, California. Not that it ever stood in any other place <laughs> prior to then. And it's a place that you can go tour. I have stumbled upon videos of this house on YouTube and didn't know that apparently I kind of already knew a little bit of the story of this house, but... Yeah, it's got a very interesting past and an interesting way that the house was actually curated and how it came about. And today we're going to be sharing that with you. Ooh, interesting. Before we get into it, today's podcast is sponsored by water. Remember to stay hydrated. Even though it's getting cold, you still need to drink proper water, drink fluids, stay healthy. Why am I bringing this up? Because my wife is carrying around a giant blue bottle that is equivalent to one gallon of water that has notches on it that say at what time of the day how much water she should be drinking. And it's a constant reminder in my face that I need to drink water. So shout out to you and your gallon oversized water bottle. <laughs> it's an obnoxious yeah. sized water there bottle. It is. It looked like something you carry on a oh picnic and share with everyone. Yeah. And then I was <laughs> Only like, it's personal. <laughs> and then I was like, "Are you gonna take that with you on the trip? Like when we're gonna when we're hiking? Are you gonna be carrying that thing?" She said, and "How she are was, you?" Yeah, she's like, "Yeah, it comes with a carrying strap and everything." And I was like, "Really?" Mm -hmm. And then she was like, "Uh, you're right. I'll just leave it in the car to refill the water bottle." And I was like, oh "That doesn't gosh. make any sense either." But okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Her that water bottle is like a. Uh, blinky. It's I know she's her carrying blinky. it with her everywhere she, brings she goes. It out every morning, I know. she's like, put it on the counter. Like, right? <laughs> there's my water. Okay. I'm like, awesome. You're almost at three o'clock. This is where you use that meme that goes weird flex, but okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyways, <laughs> love you. <laughs> All right. So back onto the Winchester house. This house was the brainchild of Sarah Winchester, heir by marriage to the Winchester Firearms Fortune, and since the project began in 1884, rumors have swirled about the construction, the inhabitants, and the seemingly endless maze that sits at 525 South Winchester Boulevard. I just felt like I had to say the address that way. <laughs> 525 South Winchester Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Would you like to get into the origins of the Mitch... The, whoa, I can't talk. <laughs> Would you like to get into the origins of the Winchester Mystery House and its tormented brainchild? Ooh, yes. Well, today the house is known as the Winchester Mystery House. But at the time of its construction, it was simply Sarah Winchester's house. Sarah Winchester was the widow of William Wirt Winchester, heir to the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. So they, they did those guns, the, the Winchester. OG WWW. Mm -hmm. Get it? www. Yeah, www. Okay. <laughs> com. Born around 1840, Sarah Winchester grew up in a world of privilege. She spoke four languages. That's pretty cool back then. Yeah. Attended the best schools around, married well, and eventually gave birth to a daughter, Annie. However, tragedy struck in her late 20s when Annie died, followed by the death of Sarah's husband, William, more than a decade later. That's sad to lose yeah. your, your child and then your husband and then you're the only one left. That sucks. 
After William's death in 1881, Sarah inherited roughly $20 million, over $500 million in 2019 and 2020, as well as 50% of the Winchester Arms Company, which left her with a continued income equal to $1,000 a day, or $26,000 today. Can she share some of that with me? Seriously. Well, she's gone now. Well, yeah. <laughs> can I can I inherit a company no that will pay me a thousand dollars? Right. No heirs to that. Wow. I'll be the heir if you want. Newly in possession of a massive fortune and struggling with the loss of her husband and daughter, she sought the advice of a medium. She hoped perhaps to get advice from the beyond as to how to spend her fortune or what to do with her life. Really, a medium? To tell mm -hmm. you how to spend your money, usually people get this finance rules. This is why you should. <laughs> this is why you should be careful what you wish for. Because what if she made a wish that she would have like become rich, and then this is how she became rich? I know, right? That's not how you want it to happen, exactly. Seriously. Though the exact specifics remain between Sarah Winchester and her medium, the story goes that the medium was able to channel dearly departed William, who advised Sarah to leave her home in New Haven, Connecticut, and head west to California. As far as what to do with her money, William answered that too. She was to use the fortune to build a home for the spirits of those who had fallen victim to the Winchester rifles, lest she be haunted by them for the rest of her life. That's crazy. Also, what kind of idea is that? Yeah, build a house for all the spirits to go into who died from the rifles. That makes sense. It's like build a home for the lost souls. Plot twist, the medium owned a construction company and it was all a scam to forever have employment for Seriously? building to make tons of money. Really? No, I just came up with that right now. <laughs> I but know, how right? kind of genius know, is that, right? right? That would be totally be genius. like, oh my gosh, you know, you know what you really need to do according to the spirit of your dearly beloved husband? You need to build a house and you need to employ this construction company to do it for the rest of time. Or plot twist, what if... She lost a lot of family members to the Winchester rifle and to make her And this her was pay like her punishment? It. Yeah. You think? Yeah. It's possible. I, I mean, she's a medium. So she's yeah, like, let me use happen. that. So that way she shall be building forever until yeah. the end of her time. Anything could happen. Yeah. Anything could happen. So in 1884, Sarah Winchester purchased what would later become known as the Winchester Mystery House. At the time of the sale, the house was a small, unfinished farmhouse, but that quickly changed. Winchester hired carpenters to work around the clock, expanding the house, ex expanding the small house into a seven story mansion. Due to the lack of a plan and the presence of an architect, the house was constructed haphazardly. Rooms were added onto exterior walls, resulting in windows overlooking other rooms. Multiple staircases would be added all with different sized risers, giving each staircase a distorted look. Hmm. I heard that some of the doors led to nothing. Yes. <laughs> it's like, what? Yes, I recall this as well. Doors leading to nothing, staircases yes. to nothing. It was supposed to confuse the ghost, which I think um, would go It was into supposed later. to keep the, the yeah, this, it's weird. Because if you're a ghost, you don't need to walk. You can just go through the walls, right? I don't know. Maybe if they're dead, but <laughs> they like don't know picture. they're dead. There's they like think they can't walk through walls, so they don't walk through walls. They There's walk like through the doors. A picture like of a map, and it's like how to navigate the maze, and it's like for a regular person, you got to do all this know, stuff. Right? <laughs> for a ghost, di directly straight to the middle through all the hedges. Yep, hmm. that's how it goes. Stranger was stranger. So was the fact that many of the alterations seemed pointless. Staircases would ascend several levels, then end abruptly. Doors would open to solid walls. And hallways would turn a corner and end in a dead end. Isn't that something like, hey, where's your bathroom? Oh, you just go down this hall and then make a left and then go down that hall. Make sure you don't make a wrong turn because you'll end up somewhere else. Well, something tells me she probably didn't have a lot of visitors except for the people who were building. Well, that's true. Additionally, Winchester insisted that the home be built exclusively out of red wood. However, she didn't like the look of the wood. So she insisted it would be covered with a stain and folk grain. 
By the time the house was completed, over 20,000 gallons of paint had been used to cover the wood. Isn't that ridiculous? Because the whole that reason so that ridiculous. people use redwood is like for the look of the wood and everything like that. And then to cover it with paint. <laughs> I know, because it's like, uh, it's don't like, like okay. that redwood. Oh. Mm. Wow. By the turn of the century, Sarah Winchester had her ghost house, an oddly laid out mansion with seven stories, 161 rooms, 47 fireplaces, 10,000 panes of glass, two basements, three elevators, and a mysterious funhouse-like interior. I'm not going to lie, though. That sounds like something that would just be fun to just wander around, you know? I know. Or, like, you'll always be finding something new or making your way. I know. Like, can you imagine you're like, oh, stairs, and you're walking up, and then it just ends. Like, it goes yeah. nowhere. <laughs> it's just, it. that's it. <laughs> Like, what are these types yeah, here for? Right? It's like, uh, okay. It makes you want to break through to see what's in the other side. It makes you wonder if you're in a fever dream. I know, right? You'd be like, man, maybe I shouldn't have uh, had that drink before I came here. I think I'm starting to see <laughs> stairs that lead to nothing. I know, right? <laughs> Am I hallucinating? What right? was in that tea she gave me? Am I asleep? That sounds like something that you would dream. I know. This is, oh my God, this is a house <laughs> made out of those dreams that you right? have that make no sense where you're going up like something and then all and of a sudden it just turns like, into where, something where else. Where am I going? Or you open a door that like leads into a nothing, nothing or just is a wall. Or a, or a wall or it leads to the open world. Yeah, this sounds like those no dream roof. houses that make no sense. Yeah. yeah. And then you're like, what the hell? There's no roof all of a sudden. <laughs> or there is a roof. Where does or the door like, go what? to open space yeah or you walk through a room and then all of a sudden you're like going through a circle back to the other room and you're like what how did i get here i know it's a dream it's like those dream nightmare houses like a never-ending maze yeah if she wasn't crazy when she commissioned this house to be built after walking through it all this time you would definitely become crazy i feel like seriously at what point like how do you know when you're dreaming or when you're awake because when you're awake that's when things are supposed to like ma logically make sense and your house never makes sense when you're awake or asleep <laughs> so it's like <laughs> Do you think the house made sense in her dreams and then when she was awake, it was a crazy house or maybe she just got crazier and crazier as time went on? I have no idea. Anyone who set foot in the home could tell that no expense had been spared. So everything, you know, was done very expensively. Well, when you have like 20 something million dollars, you got nothing else to do with it. That's true. You're just like, oh, well, use the finest things that you can. I mean, the no best children, no nothing. She just invested now, it in the home <laughs> here's the unfortunate thing because they didn't have like an architect designing the house this house was literally just like poorly made up from what i recall it was like ghost telling the way yeah. someone telling her like a ghost telling yeah. her or a dead husband or something telling her like the way the house was meant to be yes. built and so it made no sense and because the architect wasn't involved i hear the architecture is actually pretty poorly done but it like is quite appealing to the eye but architecturally wise it's very like poor mm-hmm Gold and silver chandeliers hung from the ceilings above hand in the parquet flooring. Dozens of artful stained glass windows created by Tiffany and Company dotted the walls, including some designed by Louis Comfort Tiffany himself. One window in particular was intended to create a prismatic rainbow effect on the floor when light flowed through it. Of course, the window ended up on an interior wall. <laughs> And thus the effect was never achieved. Wow, what, what a waste. <laughs> what a waste. I think that would have looked so beautiful. Yeah, had that's it been, such a waste. Had it been, you know, done. <laughs> really? Like there are so many there's outside an, windows. Why couldn't they have put on it on an outside? There's, there's an interior window. That is meant <laughs> to have the sunshine through it. Okay. Even more luxurious than the fixtures was the plumbing. An electrical work. Rare for the time, the Winchester Mystery House boosted indoor plumbing, including COVID hot running water and push button gas lightning. Available lightning. Through, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and push button gas lighting available throughout the home. Additionally, forced air heating flowed throughout the house. So this was yeah. a home before its time. Yeah, it was literally spare no expense in every aspect. Seriously. So. I mean, could you imagine gas lighting? That was dangerous. No wonder there was a lot of fires back then. We had a gas in stove. Homes. But that's a gas stove. I'm talking well, gas mm. lighting. So that means. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, you yeah, hit a button yeah, that and gas incredibly. goes through these, these pipes and it comes out each 
in the visual light. Oh, God. That sounds like so, a nightmare. Yes. That's dangerous. I would assume they would get rid of that by this point. Yeah. Unfortunately, in 1904, an earthquake struck San Jose and the Winchester Mystery House sustained a heavy amount of damage. Thanks to the floating foundation, a foundation that equals the weight of the surrounding soil, the entire house was saved from collapse. The top three floors were ultimately removed, leaving the house with only four stories as seen today. Yeah, four stories, not as uh, visually appealing to me like as seven stories. Even that floating foundation, that's something ahead of its time too like this house was built from the future <laughs> i never heard of a floating foundation before well they usually use that a lot in um places that floods or earthquakes and stuff because it kind of helps um, your home from sinking right that makes but. sense <laughs> do we do that in florida um probably i but never it, maybe I mean, very expensively i don't know i'm gonna have to look this up floating i know right foundation floating foundation <laughs> Yeah, this house was inspired by Up. You attach balloons to it and it's a floating foundation. I know. <laughs> like when his house flew away. A haunted legacy. Throughout the years-long construction of the Winchester Mystery House, Sarah Winchester would never confirm that she was building a haunted house. However, stories and rumors swirled throughout San Jose. The contractors who worked on the house reported Winchester having daily seances with local mediums in an effort to reach good spirits. These quote-unquote good spirits were reportedly consulted to find out how to best appease the spirits whom she was allegedly building the house for. These spirits are reportedly what called Winchester to make so many illogical additions to the home. That's another thing that's crazy. I know that I've heard stories and I think in the movie they show the part where she actually had a room specifically built for the medium to come. Yes, I and heard about this that's as where well. she held her seance with mm -hmm. them. And that's where she would get all her knowledge on continuing building the home. Yeah, if Which I'm is, not mistaken, the crazy. seance room was one of the hardest rooms to find. Yes, yes. it was very, It was very like a maze well to get to the seance yes. room. Yes. She obviously, she didn't want the ghost to find the seance room. So. I know, right? We don't want the ghost to know yeah. what we're doing. So we have to keep it a secret. Them. Yeah. We only want them to consult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. Pretty much. Far after the construction was completed, Winchester continued to make efforts to appease the victims of the Winchester rifles. Out of the 13 bathrooms in the home, only one was functional, in an effort to confuse any ghost wishing to haunt a spigot. Furthermore, she would sleep in a different room every night in the Winchester house and use secret passageways to get from room to room so that no spirits could follow her. In the years Sarah Winchester lived in the house, the residents of San Jose whispered about its strange construction and even stranger inhabitant. But it was in the years after her death that the wild stories became even wilder. After her death in September of 1922, Sarah Winchester left all of her belongings to her niece Marion, who had served as her personal secretary later in life. However, the Winchester Mystery House was never mentioned in her will, adding to the mystery of the home. After appraisers deemed the house worthless due to its strange design, damage from the earthquakes, and the long-winded construction, Marion took everything in it and auctioned it off. The current owners of the house claim it took six weeks to empty the house of all furniture, though the report is uncorroborated. After the house was emptied, a local investor purchased the home for a cool $135,000. Just five months after Sarah Winchester died, the Winchester Mystery House was open to the public for tours. Despite being fully emptied, refurnished, and opened for business, the Winchester Mystery House continued to surprise. While Sarah Winchester was alive, stories were told of a storage room in her home filled with over $25,000 worth of undisplayed riches, including a Tiffany window designed by Winchester herself, featuring a spiderweb design. In 2016, a secret attic was discovered, though there's no proof it was the same secret storage room. Inside the attic were a pump organ, a Victorian-era couch, a dress form, a sewing machine, and various paintings. A year later, rooms that were never open to the public were put on display, including sections of the home that had remained unfinished at the time of her death. Even 95 years after her death, it seemed that Sarah Winchester's house was still holding on to some secrets. Secrets which fuel pop culture's obsession with the house. In 2018, Helen Mirren starred in Winchester as Sarah Winchester herself. The story took the rumors about the hauntings in the house and ran with them, depicting a woman crazed by the ghosts of Winchester rifles. 
Filming for the movie took place at the actual Winchester Mystery House. Additionally, the home has been the setting for numerous supernatural horror movies and novels, as its mere existence provides ample inspiration. Since her death, little has been uncovered about Sarah Winchester and the reasoning behind her obsession with building the Winchester Mystery House. She gave no interviews, left behind no journals, and had no family willing to speak about her. Occasionally, visitors to the home will report feeling the spirits that have long resided in the home, though of course paranormal investigations have turned up nothing. But perhaps there are still some spirits haunting the abode, maybe even Sarah Winchester herself. After all, she built the house for the restless dead. Why not take advantage of it herself? What would be even know, right? better is that she's a ghost and she can't even remember how to navigate through her own I house. Know, so she's like, wait a minute, I did this so well. How do I get back there? Yeah. The part that threw me off is why would she need to have an unfunctional bathroom as if ghosts have the need to use the toilet? Because... You know that when spirits are haunting your house, for some reason, they're always messing with your water. Really? Yeah. They flush Do the toilet. Do you have personal they run experience the with this? No, I'm just speaking from like YouTube experiences. People. Oh, yeah. You know, people that say their house is haunted or watching those haunted movies. It's always they're always messing with water. And from my experience, it's always known that when there's a possession, they're always thirsty. So yeah. they're always looking for water. Hmm. So. But those are the unrested yeah. spirits. There's quite a few different things that have covered the Winchester house where they've like visited it, visited it, and uh, conducted paranormal investigations, like I said. However, um, nobody has like really found any compelling, quote unquote, compelling evidence to suggest the house is actually haunted. So I like to hear stories of people who've actually visited the place to see if there are smaller people who are sharing stories that are maybe not as well known so i did a search through reddit because you know reddit is a great place to find people who share their stories and i found a little thread that started off by a user lake block walker six oh sorry i can't talk <laughs> that started with user luke block walker 69 <laughs> and this is three months ago and they said, I believe I may have seen a ghost at the Winchester house in California. The story goes, so we were on a tour with 15 some people and I went ahead and saw what I presumed to be a worker there. Someone in costume to add to the environment of the tour. But I was the only one that saw her. She looked to be about my age, so somewhere between 16 to 18 maybe. Wearing what I later identified as a late 1800s maid outfit. At least I think. This was a while ago and I only recently thought about it. She walked off down a hall or something and went out of sight. I later realized that I didn't see anyone else dressed up and since I was ahead, I was the only one who saw her. I've just thought about it and can't find any evidence of people working there in costumes. I've tried, but I can't find any info. And then, someone else, user Hither and Yon, shared that they went there last summer. They were one of the first tours of the day, so there were only four people and the guide and the group. When we went into the basement, it was through kind of a low-walled hallway, if that makes any sense. That dead ended, and then you had to go left or right. When we got to the end, we headed left to the boilers or something. I looked right and saw a man pushing a wheelbarrow go around the corner down at the far end. It was darker in that area, but I figured he was a worker or something. I thought it was weird he was working in a dark area, and I mentioned it to the guide, and she said no one was down there besides us. And several other people on the thread seemed to also share similar experiences where... Typically, it seems like the thing is that people are seeing what they think are workers working in the house, mm -hmm. but actually there's no workers. I wonder in the if house. those workers died in the house. Right? Well, or maybe they just died while working on the house and then just reported maybe, to work the next day and they know, still right? report to work. Or maybe they were shot by the Winchester rifle because they weren't doing the job right. <clears throat> and since she was building the house for the spheres anyway, they stood there. Huh? <laughs> That didn't make any sense. Can you maybe say that again? Can you I explain said, that one more time? <laughs> I said maybe they were shot with a Winchester rifle. And then they just went Sarah. to work at the house? And then <laughs> since the, the house is being built for those spirits being shot by the Winchesters, hmm. they stood there, continue working in spirit. That's weird. That isn't, that's, or maybe that they're weird. spiritly building what she's telling them to build now that she's dead with them. 
perhaps the ghosts she consulted with were like, nah, this ain't right. And so they're still working I trying know, to right? fix the house. <laughs> and like, oh, no, this is this what happens supposed to be for here. not listening to us when we told you you should get an architect. Right. <laughs> and she's like, I have um, architects. She'll be here on Monday and we'll be in the hidden room yeah. and we will be talking to all the spirits that are going to tell us what to do with this home. And ghosts don't she count speak that way. <laughs> She's from North Carolina, y'all. So she's going to speak, you know, Southern. <laughs> or so they say. Well, Sarah was born. They say in, she's the same, but she's never the same. South or North Carolina? I didn't. I don't remember. Oh, Connecticut. Yeah, I, that was what I say. It doesn't Connecticut sound like North Carolina. You know what else happened in Connecticut? What? The Conjuring. Oh, yeah. A lot of stuff. Weird stuff. I know. What's, what, what's going up with Connecticut? What's going up? What's going up? <laughs> What's going on with Connecticut? What's going on with up north, period? Like New York, Philadelphia, New Jersey, Connecticut, all those areas. It's like very haunted. Very. Well, because a lot of of the original settlement was up north. Am I right? Pennsylvania? Yeah. Delaware? Was part of the original. A lot of this area, like from up north to here, always went to New York, Mm -hmm. Chicago. I mean, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago further <sighs> in, but they always landed in New York and then traveled through to get to Chicago and all those places. But they always settlers when they were coming towards us during her time. Yeah, let's start like they uh, always Pennsylvania, landed in New Connecticut, York, Pennsylvania, yeah, Connecticut. Yep, yeah. and they and, built uh, and made their homes there. Yeah, mm-hmm. most of the right part of the United States uh, from like maine down to florida would be like part of the original settlement coming from europe it would make sense that you would you know be on like that right side of the map and then Mm -hmm. you know the thing to take over the rest of the united states what do they call that movement the midwest the great what do they call that a manifest destiny across yeah i mean she traveled from north uh, I mean, why do I keep saying North Carolina? <laughs> you got something with she, North Carolina? I don't know. <laughs> she traveled from Connecticut. Now, mind you, yeah. this is like the other side of the world, all the In way time, to Los Angeles, San Jose. During that time, where San Jose, California, yeah, like not Los no, Angeles. I mean, <laughs> San Jose. She still traveled to California. Yeah. You know. That's a long trip yeah. back in those days. Were there airplanes? There weren't even airplanes that traveled this you back and forth. This was in the 1800s. Forth. I don't I, think. Yeah, it does, it was I like, think it was 1844 that it said construction had begun. Or wait, maybe that was the year she was born. My bad. No, she was born in 18... It's clear that I read it, but I didn't absorb the information. 1884 was started the construction. So she was already in California. Now, mind you, I think what they had, what, um, wagon, wagons that would take There were cars you, in the 1800s. Um, Let's find out how people got traveled about in the 18... Cars, cars already She was existed. born in 1840. I think they were airplanes. Yeah, but I don't think the airplanes were for, for like the way we travel now. I think they had airplanes, but they were mostly using like a military or private people. I don't think they they seated so many people to travel. Maybe a train? Yeah, sure. Trains, the train they probably yet. had a train. My lack of knowledge on history is showing yeah. right now <laughs> because I don't know how um, people traveled back then. I don't know. I'm seeing some stuff about like. Mostly horses, mostly horse. Yeah, mostly mostly horse horseback. carriage rides yeah. and um, trains. I don't know if it went all the way to California. I know that there were trains that were starting to set up, but I don't know yeah. about traveling talking, all the way across the country. We're talking like 150 years ago. Yeah, I mean we're wow. talking about traveling across the country. That's insane. I, it doesn't matter. I mean, people that land in New York and stuff and then start traveling west, that's a big travel. Hot air balloons? Or is this a European thing? Probably know. a European um, thing. Yeah, so who knows? European on my boots. They should have told us how did she travel there. I know, right? It Inquiring minds need to know. 1840, how does she travel from Connecticut, which is like on the complete opposite, literally as opposite of the United mm. States you can get to Cali. 
Yep. We're talking upper north part of the U.S. down to the lower west, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She went from the east coast to the west coast, which today you can do in a, you know, couple of hours. Back then, couple it was of probably hours. Still a, pretty, a much longer trip. Like, long what, four flight. hours? About four, like to four five. or five hours, yeah. I think. But yeah. And that's in crazy. Plane. So imagine going by, by horse. Know, but even like by today's standards, if you were driving, it would still take you like three days. By car, by car. it would be a little faster. And imagine but like, imagine by horse. Yeah, by it horse. It must have taken like a month to get there. Or whatever, there. or a train. I don't know if they had trains at that time that traveled like that or whatever the case was. Anyways, yeah, this stuff was crazy. So the thing is that the house is only haunted by standards that she believed that she was being haunted by the spirits of people who were killed by Winchester rifles, which may not even have necessarily been true. Not sure where this information came from, but her that was her reason for like building a house like that. So technically the house doesn't really have like a haunted history per se. It's really that she, she built it was on told that yeah, on the perception that she was going to be haunted by these ghosts. It's like you're haunted, honey, because you guys created yeah. these rifles that are killing people maybe she was letting her personal opinions get in the way exactly. of that one i don't know maybe she had a family member something that was killed by one of the winchester rifles and so she was like yeah let me tell you what you need to do you need to build a house forever and be alone and, and basically so honey, i mean she kind of made her life like a living hell if yeah. you think about it where yeah. she just made her forever scared yeah. and always like, forever feeling, scared and constantly building yeah never like, being able to enjoy her time seriously like um the facts about this I house i don't know it sounds to me like it could be a personal vendetta i think of so. sorts i don't know <clears throat> and this is just my out of the wild guess that's not based at all on any type of fact <laughs> so the facts about this house from 1886 to 1922 construction seized of course after she passed away right the house is was then 24,000 square feet. 24,000 square feet. That's huge. That's oh my, like, for some reason, I was thinking in my head 2,400 think, square feet. And then I was like, oh, it wasn't sinking in 24,000. At 1,000 square feet a house, that is about 24 houses. What houses are you living in that well, are 1,000 square feet? That's a tiny that house. Have, really, the apartment we were living in was barely 1,000 a a square yeah, feet. It and it had two bedrooms, two baths. Yeah, but it was small. It's livable. Yeah, but it it's small. small. Mm. Anyway, back to twenty four thousand square feet. And even if they they're two thousand square feet of home, that's still a lot of houses that can fit in that area. Well, that's like twenty of our house. Yeah, and then some. Ten thousand windows, two thousand doors, a hundred and sixty rooms, fifty two skylights, forty seven stairways and fireplaces. 17 chimneys, 13 bathrooms, six kitchens, and it was built at the price tag of $5 million in 1923 or $71 million today. Wow. That is I could huge. build my own theme park with $71 million. That is huge. Or can I? I would like open yeah, up that. I could that, build my own theme park. I would open up that place as like hotel rooms. I don't, that's a thing though, because of the way it's built and like how messy and messed up it is, it wouldn't make sense to use it as a hotel, really, because it's like, why not? I make mean, sense. you get to spend the night there. Because most of the bathrooms and don't you even get to work. Experience. I don't know if you can stay overnight in that house or not. I know, we have 13 bathrooms yeah. and they're not functioning, only one is. Right? So it's like, okay, everybody <laughs> share the one bath, unless they get the other ones functioning. Uh, I don't know. It depends on how they made it. It probably yeah. no plumbing or anything, so you need plumbing. And then, then the way it's constructed, no architect, so there's probably nowhere to put plumbing. Who knows? Here's the thing, though. Well, no, it said they had great plumbing and like the way and the system in the that they used for the and yeah kitchens. in the working ones. So it's, right. it must be a good enough setup to remember. For the rest she of them. put a window, an exterior window on, on a wall, the inside, on yeah, the inside of a wall with no sunlight. So. When the window was intended to have sunlight <laughs> go through it. She probably put like this bathroom it's like in an area where there's nowhere to put plumbing. It's like spending $500 on an Apple watch and you have not an Apple phone. Like what's the perp? <laughs> you just have this overly expensive watch for no reason. I don't know. 
That was my weird comparison, but I mean, a Tiffany window though, that must have cost thousands of dollars. Well, apparently it's one of the top destinations for people to go and tour yeah, the house. I see a lot about it, but it yeah. like it doesn't particularly draw me as a place to go. I would. I want to see these these steps that go nowhere and these doors that open to nothing. It sounds interesting, <laughs> like, but not interesting enough for me to actually like travel out of my way to see it. Like if something if I was already there and I was just, you know, in the area or already visiting that area, then I might stop by and see it. But it's not something that I would like go out of my way to travel to and visit. No, I wouldn't. But if I was out west, I would want to stop in and see it. Yeah, maybe if you, yeah, that's what I was saying. If you were like already in Cali, like doing other stuff and then you were just like, oh, you know what? We're not that far away from the Winchester house. And then you go visit it. I would do that. And then I think like on Halloween, they do this light show on the house that, that looks really cool. cool. So you can, uh, that's something that you can see at night. And um, if you're not traveling right now, obviously because of everything going on, but you still want to have an experience of what the inside of the house looks like. And you're interested, if you Google Winchester House, there's the Winchester House website. And on that website, you can do a 360 degree virtual experience tour of the home for $8.99. <laughs> I would do it. And then they offer a tour that you can do at night that's called like a Halloween light tour or something like that. Halloween night tour where you uh, go through the house self-guided um and you get to experience the house at night and then they have the tour that you can do during the day and the difference is like ten dollars it's like 39.99 if you do it during the day self-guided through the house and then there's uh and it's 49.99 if you're doing it in the evening at night self-guided so interesting things to note yeah, it's a very complicating house like when you're looking at it it looks like some kind of a castle type thing that you would find I sitting know. at the top of the mountain somewhere but as you, you know, I mean, when you look at it, it looks pleasing. But then when you really look at it, you're like, why is that door there? There's no steps. Why is it showing this or why is it showing that or why is it? <laughs> and what were the, what was she thinking when she did that? Trying it's to like, rationalize a completely irrational thing. Did she build this house out of her dreams? It's completely it's irrational. Like, um, it's like mediums tell her how to build. But in dream states. Yeah, that doesn't make it's like if I had a dream and I saw yeah. this ridiculous house in my dream and then I was like, this is the house that I need to build. But it makes like literally no sense. I don't know. It's then one again, of those things that you would find in. Uh, what is his name? In one of his cartoons. Oh, uh, Tim Burton. Tim Burton. It's like one of those houses that you would find in tim burton's cartoon yeah <laughs> just like that you know how like they're the doors are always like different and it's like weird yeah it doesn't make any sense yeah yep something like, like that yeah it's like a tim burton tim burton builds all his house and like the way he does all his cartoons everything is oddly shaped yes and then like, everything giant houses on like tiny little things yes. and stuff is very weird yes <laughs> it's like where does it he goes come up really with the small stuff from? and then really wide yeah where does he come up with this stuff from <laughs> it's like dreams done in cartoon kind of yeah so that's what his, the winchester house his, is his um inspiration for everything is skeleton yeah skeleton so, so the winchester house is kind of the same yeah concept it's weird so it's not only confusing spirits, it's confusing us. <laughs> and to think yeah. that she, every night she slept in a different room. Well, so that she's not disturbed by the spirits. The house that nobody should break into because they'll never be able to find their way back out. I know, out. it's the never ending house. And someone breaks in there to try to steal that Tiffany's window and instead they get oh, lost well. and then they die of starvation. They end up somewhere <laughs> with, where the steps it's and like a double whammy <laughs> yeah right imagine you go in there and you're trying to like rob the house and you're like but you just oh my get gosh lost. found a door open the door step out fall three stories down into a hole and <laughs> gone forever <laughs> that'd be crazy i think they did put um if i'm not mistaken in some of the doors that led to open nothing that people can just fall out and die yeah. they added these cage like oh yeah so that you don't actually so that die you don't yeah. actually 
die. Yeah, because, you know, in today's, in modern times, you can't yeah. just let, leave situations where people can just fall off and die. Well, in the movie, one of the workers, I think it was a maid, opened the door and stepped out and there was nothing there. And then she, and she died. What? So, Why didn't she I mean, look? don't quote me on that because it's been a long time since I've seen the movie. <laughs> Why didn't but she look? But they do have though? the movie. It's like a, a haunted horror movie. Yeah, I've seen, I see the thing. I think it's, it's on like Netflix. Netflix or Hulu. Yeah, I think it's on them. Netflix and it says Winchester. I think yeah. it's just called Winchester. That's it. Yeah. And, but then they do have a Winchester series. I haven't looked um, at that one. I don't know if but, it's a series. Yeah, oh my gosh. Speaking of series. It's like two seasons or something like that. There's some scary movies that you didn't know had a series attached to it. Like The Exorcist did a series. It didn't yes. last very long. That's like two mm -mm. seasons. And then that mm -hmm. was it. And then um, they there's a new series that is a Netflix original that's called Juon Origins. Is it on Netflix or Hulu? It's on Netflix. It's called Juon Origins, which Juon, I believe, is The Grudge. They're doing a oh, show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. they're doing a show off of The Grudge. And yeah, it, it says like it's Japanese based, or uh, Japanese. Or yeah. Yeah. And it says it's based off. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. No, and I think you're right. It's on it's, Netflix. Um, it's based off of the true stories that are behind mm -hmm. the grudge, the movie, which apparently are even worse than like what the grudge movie yeah, actually was. It is. Um, it looks disturbing. It's like different stories. Oh, my gosh. I fell down the hole. Like, look, <laughs> well, I didn't fall in an actual hole. Okay? Oh, I was going to say. I was on Netflix. <laughs> I you was, was on, on Netflix and you fell in the hole? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you fell in the Netflix hole. <laughs> yeah, I fell down that that thing. Well, remember that movie I told you to watch because it was so disturbing to me? The platform. Yes. Oh yes. my God, the platform, that hole. Yeah. You fall down that hole. Yeah, nobody wants to go down there. Um, What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I was on Netflix and I was looking through like all the horror movies and I was like, why are all the creepy, disturbing horror movies? They're all foreign films. None of them are like in English. I know. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of I mean, some of the stuff is from here, but a lot of our stuff is adapted from things from other countries. Yes, they are. There's a lot of scary Japanese yes, folk legends and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like a lot no, of disturbing there's a things. Lot of, uh... If they have the highest... A lot of disturbing things. Well, they have the highest, um, what? The highest count of suicides? There's even a suicide forest. Oh, yeah, the suicide. I, there's a movie based off of that called The yeah. Forest. Yeah. yeah. They have a suicide forest that when they go in there, everyone knows what they're going to do. Well, not they're everybody there who to, goes in there is going to commit suicide. Well, some people go in there to look for spirits or, you know, do the, ooh, yeah. we're walking through the forest. But some people literally go in there to commit suicide. Mm. It's called the suicide force. It's disturbing. Well, it's not really called the suicide force, but it well, be, it was it. <laughs> it got that name because of the amount of suicides. I saw a suicides. movie where I can't remember the name because it was so long ago because I'm always clicking on anything horror and watching it. And it was a girl who went to Japan and then... She was like missing for a long time because she was going into that forest to do yeah, a this, story. Uh, this is something that I saw, I'm pretty sure. And then they called never the found forest. her. It's probably that one. It's called The Forest. So then her sister went to look yes, for her. Yes, that's The Forest. Oh, okay. So it's the that's same the movie. one that I watched. Yeah, I watched that too. And the way it went was her sister did go there. She was in Japan. Yeah. She... She, met she with did have a history of uh, suicidal thoughts. Yes, but she was like, but she was like past that point. So, she, so her sister was saying that she wouldn't do that now. Yes, and they say that like it's easy. It's oh, a she huge went forest. Into the forest. So she went in there to kill yeah. herself. No, my sister wouldn't do that. It's a huge forest, so it is easy mm -hmm. that to get lost, especially if you go off of the path. Well, you she can did get lost. Get lost. That was the thing. The yeah. spirits were confusing her, right. and they wouldn't like let her leave. That is like an actual like legend that i've heard people yeah. say about the forest that when you go in that even if you don't have and it was playing on her suicidal old thoughts yeah it was it like was playing on it was it. like a thing if you don't if you're not going into the forest suicidal that if you go off the path and stuff and you wander mm -hmm. too much like the spirits can get to you in your head and stuff and make you yeah. do make you commit suicide. make you commit suicide anyway or kill you by you getting lost or whatever stuff yeah. like that anyways that's off top. That doesn't anyway, have anything to do with the Winchester house, but no. yeah. <laughs> no, but it does have to do with Halloween. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's going to do all these scary movies. Scary movies and stuff. I love, love, love Halloween. I love that they bring out all these scary movies. Um, 
and then they like highlight them on Hulu and Netflix. So that you yeah, can Netflix watch them. has a little Halloween tree yes. section. So does Hulu. Mm. There was also looking in the hollow looking in the Halloween treat section of Netflix. There's this TV show called the the Worst Witch, and I was like, I wonder what this is. It looked kind of cute at first. It looked like it was uh, making fun of Harry Potter because it was like a school for witches and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and it looks like Hogwarts. And then the way that they were dressing and the like the different colors and stuff like that, yeah. it looked like a spoof off of Hogwarts. I was like, is this supposed to like low key be hmm. making fun of? harry potter so we watched one episode and i didn't like it it was but it was very clear that it was made for children so the worst witch yeah it's called the worst witch i think i saw that title but i didn't click on it yeah i saw a little preview and it looked interesting so we watched the first episode but i was like yeah this is very clearly made for like 10 year old children yeah what i did watch was um not very good i hope at least for my opinion i hope i'm saying this right but it's called wretched it's on Hulu. Oh, Ratchet or Ratchet? No, not Ratchet. That's a new series on Netflix that I'm going to start series? watching. It's a series, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's with a lot of characters from American Horror Story. So it's got to be good. Um, anyway, no, it's it's on Hulu. It's a movie. It's called Wretched or Wretch. Ret- it's W-R-E-T-C-H. Oh, Wretched. Yeah, Wretched. Yeah. Wretched. Wretched. Um, about some tree that turns... That's like a monster. It comes from the roots oh, of the tree. Oh, I haven't seen that. Anyway, I watched it because they were highlighting it for the Halloween thing. Was it good? Mm, That's a no. I mean, it was okay. I didn't feel like it wasted my time, but I probably could have watched something else instead and left <laughs> yeah. it for the last. Yeah, so it's not, very, not that good. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. But it is Halloween month and I'm still clicking on Halloween movies. Yes. Yeah, because, you know. Love like horror said, scary movies. Yeah, like we said many times, Halloween is our favorite time of year. Yes, it is. Um, I need last, more snacks. Yeah. Last <laughs> week, we talked about... <laughs> what did we talk about last time? Last week, we talked about the Ghost and Gravestones tour yes. of St. Augustine. Mm-hmm. The week prior to that, we talked about um, the Haunted Lighthouse. Oh, yeah. So we talked about the Haunted Lighthouse of St. Augustine, and we talked about the Ghost and Gravestones tour that are in St. Augustine. So if you want more spooky content and you haven't heard those two yet, we did talk about those two things. We have experienced those things firsthand. So we also shared our experiences mm-hmm. when we went there, which personally, I would save the Ghost and Grave Tone store for second because that one was the most haunted experience that we had. Yes. And um, I'm not sure what we're going to be talking about next time, but we're going to find something. Oh, yes. Hopefully a little bit more eerie to discuss. Um, we thought about talking about McKamey Manor, but McKamey Manor is not really a haunted thing. It's more of a like torture experience. I mean, they call it extreme yeah, haunts. Yeah, like, but, but it's not really a haunt. <clears throat> it's more of... It's like it's a torture, torture chamber. I mean, <laughs> not a torture chamber. Well, whatever, itself, but it's like a torture but, thing. You know, it's a, it's a torture thing. Yeah, so has, thought, I, to me, that has nothing to do with Halloween. Yeah, me It neither. just has something to do with your personal... But um, it pops around for Halloween. like Your personal thing to do, thing. like, um, what do they call those places where dominatrix are? They call them DSM or something like that. I don't know. I've never like even that. heard of that before. DSM or... I didn't know that was a thing. Whatever. Uh, it's, it's, to me, shades of gray. That, yeah, to me, that's more... Like that? Yeah, like mm-hmm. SMS or something like that. It's more... SMS. SMS or text DMS message or <laughs> <laughs> DMS. Oh, no, BDSM. Something like that. Yeah. It's more in I put uh, it under in that I category because that's more of a preference than a haunting. Yeah. But it's, it has nothing to do with haunting. It has to do with what you want to put your body limit through. So and they will do that extreme. Yeah. They will go to the extreme for you to feel it. So maybe we should share our own haunted note, ghost experiences. We have some ghost stories I have of our own haunt. that we can share like, as well. I could be on here all day talking about our haunts. <laughs> yeah, so we could share our own personal haunted mm-hmm. experiences that don't have anything to do with specific haunted locations and just share like our ghost stories. Yes. Or we could save that for a later one. What do you think? When we're further in October. Yeah. October's <laughs> right around the corner. And literally, what is it? What is today? today is the 29th so yeah. literally two days and then we'll be in october I and know. people already have their halloween decorations yes, up They're and stuff i'm like yeah. decorations yes they are we somebody has do you remember when we were talking about the giant skeleton that home depot saw oh, and yes. that's like 14 somebody has or something it? like that yeah somebody has the skeleton you gotta take a picture up we saw it when we were running this morning gotta take yeah. a picture 
And I was like, what? Somebody already got the skeleton When out? Here's what you need to do. When we're further in that people really have those decorations up, you need to take a walk around the neighborhood and take pictures. Yeah, and like record. And then, yeah, Can and we record. do that? Yeah, why not? I don't know. I mean, you don't want to record. Like, yeah. You don't want to record people's addresses. Just the. It's the impossible to not get the address. Sure, it is. Thingy. I mean, sure. It's I'll not. try. I'll see. I'll see. We'll well, yeah, you're like, sure it is. <laughs> we'll I'll see what I can do. When we're uh, working on them. Yeah, I'll see what and I can do. And just show how creative some people in our neighborhood can get. Yeah, there are some people around here oh, who yeah. really go all they out do. for Halloween. Yeah, I love it. Oh my gosh, I think I saw something that said there was going to be like a drive-through thing that you could do somewhere in Florida that they were going to be doing with like Halloween themed. stuff really stuff so i'm there i'm gonna have to look that up and see if we can do if that it's a drive because, through, i'm there yeah if it's a drive through, we can go through and like record it yeah because i'm not ready to be around a lot of people right now i don't know I, I don't know if honestly, i'll ever be ready i know i'm saying i don't know when i'm gonna be ready to be back around know. a lot of people I maybe when i have know. health insurance i don't know <laughs> but anything that has to do with a yeah. drive through, i'll do it yeah a drive through, i'll do yeah. um but yeah as in terms of like being around other people mm, um, I'm not ready things yet. are almost Back I'll only to business do it if as I usual. have to do it, but as long as I don't have to do it, I'm not doing it. Not ready yet. Things are almost back to normal yeah. here in Florida. At least they're acting like it is, yeah. you know, because they yeah, released. bars are opening to full capacity. Yep. Restaurants Apparently, are opening to full Universal capacity. Universal. Amusement parks are opening to full capacity. I don't know about all amusement parks, but apparently people who've gone to Universal are saying that Universal is back to 100% capacity. They're not putting, they're not like distancing people in vehicles and stuff like that. So when you get on rides, you're sitting next to other people and they're back there to like 100%. So I guess there's not really any social distancing, but you still have to wear masks. And I'm like, what's the point of the masks if you're not following any other sanitary precautions? Yeah, we missed the, the loop. We missed that opportunity. Yeah, because I did think about going to Universal because right now they have those two haunted houses that you can go through. Mm -hmm. But I only wanted to do it if they were still, you know, following the protocols they were doing before where everything was like safely distanced and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And everything was six feet apart and you weren't going to be sitting with strangers and everything. But now that they're apparently not doing any of that stuff, now I definitely don't want to go. So there's also a place called Screamageddon.com. It's S C R E A M A G E D as in David, D as in David O N dot com. They have a um, new for 2020 called Raven Hill Asylum, which is a scary walkthrough. Screamageddon. What's this? Yeah, it's called Screamageddon. Yeah, it's here in Tampa and in Orlando. Oh, <clears throat> oh you know what else uh, is going on? Walk through scary houses. So they have Raven Hill Asylum. Is this, this, this is not related to Hallow Scream? No, it's oh. called Screamageddon. Because Hallow Scream is happening this year. Yes, it is. Hallow Scream is happening. Um, they also got the San- zombie paintball. Which is also in Tampa. They got zombie paintball assault. They got the Rage 3D, the Blackpool Prison, Deadwoods, Demon's Revenge, Monster Midway with food, games, and beer, and Bonzo's Beer Garden. So after you're going through some of these haunt houses, they have Bonzo's Beer Garden where you can go have some beer without the scare. That's how they put it. <laughs> wow. Well, what's the point of going if you want to not have a scare? <laughs> I yeah. want to do the the paintball because it's like the walking dead. Yeah. You're like in this little shack. It's like a roll of people in a shack and all these zombies are coming at you and you got to shoot them down. There's Pretty also cool. a one that you can do where you're getting on a like a hayride type situation yeah. you get in a little truck and then they drive you through areas and then you're shooting from the vehicle uh paintball at zombies that are yeah. coming at you so there's so a lot of that places too. that you can actually look up online and see what's going on you yeah. can just type in like haunted places in florida or wherever you're at and it'll bring up all the things and activities that are going on in your state um in ours they also have the 5k zombie run which looks cool mm-hmm. because zombies are actually coming. Where out. is Something that? Something that 5K? you actually see. Um, it's somewhere in Tampa. Of course. Everything's in Tampa. Yeah. And it's going to be from 920 to 11 2. And tickets for all these events start at about $21.95 a it's person. not bad. No, it's not. It's not at all. It's a great night to just be out and do a couple of these things. That's like a minuscule amount of what like a Halloween Horror Nights or Hello Scream mm-hmm. ticket typically would cost. But the 5K zombie, I saw that on a show. 
So um, for the five k zombie run, are you supposed to look like a zombie while you do the run? No, there's there's gonna or you're be running zo- away from you're zombies. You're running away from oh. zombies. They're gonna have actual people what? looking like zombies. Okay, and they're gonna be chasing after you. So they're gonna so come out of all directions. Everybody. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna be coming out like you'll be jogging, you'll like be running. Next thing you know, they come out from bushes. Are they gonna oh. try to touch me? Yeah, they try to grab mm. you, and then, then you're so like, they're running. not gonna follow social distancing. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, if you're running, like, uh, if you're running, then they're like dragging. Yeah, and so running force after you to you continue trying running. To grab you. Yeah, force that, you to that's keep running. Still, yeah. you're still kind of distancing. Hmm. So. When is that zombie five k? I don't know. You have to look it up because they're different, and it starts at nine on nine twenty, so it already started. Ah, okay. and it's gonna be oh, running so they do it like until eleven. It, yeah, it's different events. Cyclically, it's got like it. um, it's it's a five k run, but it's kind of like but they're doing it like many times. It's an event. Yeah. Right. Okay. I wonder how many people so you are can sign up, up for that. that. Yeah. <laughs> really, we both sound like the same thing at the same time. Okay. So, you know, those are a couple of things that they're doing. Um, sometimes some neighborhoods do little things for kids. Like I know our neighborhood, they do a little walkthrough for the kids in our area. Where? Um, they do it right at the community center. Oh. Yeah. They decorate and everything Man, and have a little walkthrough. I am so bad at knowing what's going on in my community. <laughs> yeah, it's about that time. They're going to be sending out like texts for, hey, you got some yeah. boxes, you got some stuff. Because they really go all out with the decorations. Well, I guess all the community stuff goes to you. I don't really receive it myself, so oh. I don't know what's, I'm not in the loop. Because oh. those letters <laughs> that say everybody's name on it, my name's on there, but I never yeah, read them. Yeah, they're always looking for people to donate either their time, yeah. um, their artistics, or candy, or I'm boxes, artistic. or, you know, they, they're always asking for people to donate yeah. something into hmm. the community. But usually it's the parents that have these, that have the kids that are right. the age that volunteer and, you know, go in. Yeah, maybe I can participate together. this year. Maybe yeah. I'll participate artistically. Yeah. I so, was just talking to Alvi about this earlier and I said, you know, like when I was in high school, I we used to build sets and stuff like that. Yeah. We used to actually like build house sets and I learned how to do a lot of stuff there. And I was like, I could build my own like walk through maze if I wanted to because I know how to like make walls yeah. and build stuff. So I was like, if I really wanted to, I could build my own haunted house. Yeah, that's cool. So like maybe I can. I mean, you know, each community does some communities do their own thing for the kids. Um it helps keep the kids all in one place. Here's what I do. Give out candy. Yep. That's what I do. <laughs> Although, I love, are we going to be doing that getting, this year? Yeah, like, is candy going to be happening this year? Because why not? Uh, are we going to be it's handing still, out with gloves? They got to spray it down. Like, how is this working? Know. Are parents going to be wanting to walk in their kids to strangers' houses, not knowing, know. you know, like, what's going on in the house or if anybody's sick? Like, I don't know, I'm wondering but how it's this a is sad time this year because it's I know. like, oh, I look forward to every Halloween year. Halloween is my favorite. And having the kids knock on my door. And when I open, just see how creative parents and kids are with the costumes. Yeah. I love that. I Me love too. it. I love it. Because some really go all out. And well, then some, you know. You could, like, set up a thing outside just, where you can properly, like, not have too many people at once and be able to hand out or have or little maybe bags, just have and bags and like yeah and then and everybody can grab, grab a bag one and then every yeah. once in a while go out and refill right and just Ways everybody grab a bag stay sanitized yeah and then just like keep the table clean or something or give everyone a spritz of hand sanitizer as they're going from house to I house know. stuff like that yeah <sighs> i never I thought know. we would be here in I this know. place where we have conversations like this but at the same time it's like <laughs> We should have always, I guess, kind of been this aware of I've always health been aware because issues. I'm like yeah. OCD. I'm very OCD and Yeah, but not like to the point that you're afraid but, of standing next to people or talking to strangers, well, you know? Well, I've always been like, well, I to me, it's like if people sneeze kept, or cough, I'm like, yes, whoa, whoa, I freak whoa. out. I used to always freak out anyway when I would hear somebody coughing or sneezing. I'm like, oh, did they sneeze my way? Yeah. And then I just walk away real fast. But, um... And I, I to, never did like anybody on top of me or me being too close to me. Me neither. And I've always used my arm. And I'm like, if you're like within my arm distance, then you're in too my close. space. And you're bubble. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. like, you're in my bubble. I've always so hated please that. Step it's like, away. Here's my thing. I never saw so, the issue with social distancing because I'm like, why are you wanting to be on top of other people? I know. For what reason? Why? That's why I can honestly always say that when I got sick, it really never had to do with because I was 
like so close to somebody else because I don't like being on top. The only time that I really got sick was when you guys would get me sick when y'all were kids in uh, in school because of course kids don't know about mm. social distancing. They're on top of each other. They're playing. They're doing this, and that's when I got sick. When you guys would come, I used with, to get sick all the time working. Yeah, in the parks. when you guys would come sick or he would come sick from working at the airport. But other than that, I never got myself sick. Because you never I, well you can't get well, yourself no because sick. i'm always like distance <laughs> i used to do that all the time I'm like you're too well, close to me and they're I looking at me like theme are you park? serious i'm like yeah i'm serious you're too close to me i worked in a theme park so i didn't have the luxury of just being able to be like not next to people when i didn't want to be because the nature of the busy season is that mm. there's not a lot of space and people are just going to be close together i know and you can try to avoid it as much as you want, but it's crowds. It's yep. part of the deal, you know? Even when I used to stand in line, I'm like, why are you so close? Like, oh my I gosh, know. can you please step away? Like, stand away. Can you and please step back? It's I like, was like, ugh. Yeah, you know, usually they're always like, is that enough? I'm claustrophobic. Get together, everybody. <laughs> fill in all the empty space. And it was interesting and to go to from, from I know. It's <laughs> like, interesting to go, go? From, to go from telling people to fill in all the empty <laughs> space to stay six feet apart. I know, right? <laughs> It's such an opposite. I'm like, I'm right there. Six world, feet apart. right? I was like, yes, this is my comfort zone. I've always this is been, my bubble. Like, and if my, I if I, I spin around it. and touch you, you're too close. <laughs> right? Yeah. Spin around like a fan. <laughs> I wish the six okay. feet apart thing could last forever. Yeah, right? Honestly. Well, in my part, you'll always have six feet away from me because well you're you i don't you know, know six you. feet is quite a distance you're never actually arm's length is not your arm is not six feet long so well that's that's pretty that's pretty far though <laughs> uh yeah I but it's not know. six feet like step away it's like what it's like half of your body length i think yeah. so it's like two and a half feet so wait that's that's, not, that's yeah like two that's point something me. feet that's good for me it's very far from six because you're not even six feet tall. So even if you laid your whole body down, that would still not be six feet. Mm. Anyways, I love how I get so off topic. <laughs> We're always off topic. So, but it's still about how yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with that being said, we hope that you enjoyed today's podcast. We hope that you enjoyed the story. If there's anything you'd like to hear us talk about next, please let us know. And we will look it up and talk about it if it has to do with something spooky. This Friday, we will be talking about The Masked Singer again. Mm -hmm. We're going to watch the next episode. Super excited to see the next group of people. And then next week, Wednesday, we'll be back again with another haunted episode. So mm -hmm. we hope that you are staying safe, happy, and healthy and manifesting everything you desire out of life. Amen. <laughs>